Hey everybody, Ryan here from Global Conflict TCG. Welcome back. Um, this is going to be a really quick video. Just wanted to show you guys how um, I'm putting together the medium rulebook for the Game Crafter or using the Game Crafter template. Um, so I'm in the process of working on the rulebook right now for the game. Um, and I figured this would be a good chance to share some of the stuff that I do in Affinity Photo and Affinity Publisher and kind of how I set everything up. So I'll start here with the rulebook. Um, if you guys are interested in these kind of videos, let me know. Like, comment, subscribe. Uh, let me know if you guys like me expand further into other things like, you know, like card templates and packaging and things like that. Um, we'll start here with the rule book. So very first place to go is to the Game Crafter website. So like I said, I'm doing the medium booklet. So I'm planning on having like a bigger pack at some point with a couple decks in it. And so the medium booklet is kind of the perfect choice for me for the type of pack jam I'm looking for. Uh, but anyways, what you do... You come here, they have the templates on their website. So in my case, I usually pick the PNG, um, but you can go with these other formats if you'd like, depending on what kind of program you're using. Um, and then the big thing here to recognize is just that they tell you down here on the image size. So if you're using Photoshop or if you're using Affinity like me, or if you're gonna use um, like another option like GIMP, um, it doesn't matter, whatever photo, other photo editor you, you use, um, make sure the template that you create meets this image size. That's very important. So once you get to the uploading part, um, your images need to match these pixel counts. So let's go ahead and go back to Affinity. Um, this is just an example. So like if I show you here real quick, this is the rule book that I've been working on. You can see here I got, it's the maximum is 20 pages for a printed rule book, which is what I have here. Um, but if we take a look, so I'll go ahead and turn this picture off. We just have a blank screen here. And if we click on it, well, actually it's hard to see, but um, we'll go ahead and open this image and we'll take a look. So this is just a drag and drop image. Um, but if we take that off or if I, if I put up the template, you can see here, here's that downloaded PNG template that I was talking about. So the main thing you want to do is, you know, when you create your file, right? So you create that 1125 by 1550 pixel image. Or, or template in your program, you're gonna go ahead and drop this image from the Game Crafter. And what this is gonna do, it's gonna give you the proper outlines that you need, and it's gonna show you where to keep your text and your images for the rulebook within you know, what boundaries they need to be within in order to be safely printed. So um, just taking a look at this any, this, any of this gray area here is gonna be bleed. So this part of the image is gonna be cut off every single time. Um, the next line in, which is the red line, this is the trim line. So this is actually where they're going to cut your image at. So like anything within the red line should theoretically be on the book or inside of the book. Um, you do have to take into account there might be some shifting or some bleed over. So it could shift a little bit. But in general, when they make the cut, it's going to be at that red line. And then you can see here the blue dotted line is the safe zone. So... Um, you know, do not place any do not place any important text images beyond this dotted line. Um, anything past down the line has a potential of being trimmed. So, like I said, the real key here is to keep everything in that dotted line. And so, just to get to it, the real tip that I want to share within this video is when you use this template, um, you can leave this template and maybe like change the opacity a little bit and try to lighten it up. So, like in this case, I could kind of thin it out and then I could add things to it while keeping within these dotted lines. Um, but what I found to be a lot easier, in my opinion, is just to go ahead and make your own your own rectangles or your own lines as guides. And then you can go ahead and remove this Game Crafter image and then just work with that. So to show you, um, I got one rectangle right here. So we'll go ahead and click it on. It's kind of hard to see. Um, but if I take the Game Crafter image off, you can now see that we have a red line. So this is just the rectangle shape. And the way you do that is just by and Affinity Publisher just coming here, clicking on the rectangle tool. You got a bunch of other tools here, but I use the rectangle. Um, and then you just you just drag and drop it in, just like that. Um, and then of course, you're gonna size this rectangle to meet the boundaries within the Game Crafter template that I just showed you. Um, and then from here, you can change the opacity, you can make it transparent. And then if you wanna add like an actual line, you could do that right here with this, um, stroke option at the top and you can see here so this is actually a green box that I made um, but that's how I do it so I just follow essentially what I do is we'll take this image off we'll bring the PNG um, back 
And then we can see here with this rectangle, all I did was when I created the rectangle, I created the outline, and then I just drug it all the way until I met, kind of eyeball it the best I can to meet the line. It looks like it overlays right, right over the top of it. So um, that, it's really simple. That's, that's how I do it. And then, so the other thing I did is I have this rectangle, which is the red cut line. And then I went ahead and I, in place of this blue dotted line, I created another rectangle to outline that blue dotted line. Um, and in this case, I actually made it um, black. So you can make it black, or if you wanna make it green, sometimes it's easier to make it green. So if I take off the template from the game crafter, you can see here now I got two rectangles. I got a red rectangle, which is my cut line, and I got my black rectangle, which is um, the safe zone, indicating the safe zone. Um, and that's how I do it. It makes it really easy just to, to know where I need to keep all my content for the rulebook. And, uh, and in general, so I'll put my image back up. So now we know that this really cool image here for the cover of my rulebook, the red line is going to be cut. Everything within the black line is in the safe zone. It should be fine for printing. Um, so I hope this helps you guys out. Um, like I said, it, just a couple tips I wanted to share. It makes it easier instead of just having the Game Crafter template up, which makes it, which it's really busy with a lot of text on it. Um, and if I go through, you can see the rest of my rule book. Same thing. I have the same rectangles here. Um, and the, on these ones, I actually highlighted the rectangle green to show the safe zone. Um, but you can see how it, I use this rectangle to snap my text boxes in place and to make sure that everything is centered. So I really, this green rectangle is, is super important because I base all of the positioning of the text boxes and the images based off of that green rectangle that I made. Um, and just right, every, you know, all the way down the page is same thing. Got the cut line, got the save zone designated, and then I just add all my text and all my images, you know, according to that safe zone rectangle. So, um, like I said, I hope this helps you guys out. Um, it's, you know, the rule book is kind of a pain to get through, to be honest. Like, it takes a lot of work to do this um, and to put these images and to get all the rules. But, um, you know. Hopefully this tip helps you out. Helps you out. Um, don't make the mistake that I made where <laughs> I did the whole thing in PowerPoint and then come to find out like the scaling doesn't work out right with, you know, making a three and a half by five inch rule book. So just if you can start with a photo editor immediately, whether it's Photoshop, Affinity or GIMP or, you know, whatever you got. Um, I would just immediately go in here and start working on it within a photo editor. So that way you, you can ensure you got the proper size from the get-go instead of doing twice the work like I did. Um, so that's it. Hopefully, hope this helps. Uh, like, subscribe. Let me know if you guys have any comments or any suggestions or if there's any other type of videos you'd like to see, by all means, let me know. Appreciate you all, and um, we'll see you on the next video. Thanks.